Shabbat Shalom, everyone. You there? Ah, Shabbat Shalom. Boker Tov. Wow, what a day. I'm telling you, this, um, this makes me think of being out here with all of you and all the many reasons maybe you've come this morning um, of the wonderful Jewish idea of waking up and saying, Mode Ani. Thank you. It's a beautiful idea, isn't it? The first thing that comes out of your mouth, the first thought in your brain is, thank you. Of course, how do we remember that on a daily basis, right? So for me, I thought, here's what I'll do. I'll take a post-it, and I'll write the words, Mode Ani, and I'll put it right on my alarm clock. Okay, this way when I turn toward my alarm clock to turn off in the morning, right there the words will be, Mode Ani, thank you. And those mornings where you want to hit the snooze button, I'll still have to reach over and I'll touch the post-it and I'll know, Mode Ani, thank you. And I think this is sort of a wonderful idea that if we wake up with the recognition that we are here, we have the ability to connect with one another, to connect with creation, to recognize that we all come from the same place, there's no other words that you can say but mode ani. So with the sun shining and all of our young families here gathered, um, this is a, uh, a free-form service in the sense that if you're feeling it, I, I want you to, to incorporate that into your body, whether it's tapping your foot or snapping or clapping or dancing, um, because that's the kind of day we've been given, and for that, we say thank you. The sun is shining, it's bright light on me. I open my eyes so I can see. The birds are chirping, everyone's awakened. A new day arrives and it's calling to singing sha la 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 mode ami sha la 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 le fane ka i can be anything i want now that my soul has returned back to me, I'm free to decide it's all up to me. Cause I can make today the best it can be singing. Sha la 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 Hezarta, Binishmati, the Hemla Rabba, the Munate, la 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 Shabbat Shalom. Hey, kids, Shabbat Shalom. Are you having fun? 
Yeah. <laughs> what a great Shabbat, complete with bubbles and snacks. I can't think of a better way to celebrate Shabbat together. So we welcome all of our young families here today. Make yourselves comfortable. Have fun. Don't worry about making noise. We're just going to sing and pray, and we hope you'll join us along the way. And to all of you here in the congregation, if you want to go play bubbles, feel free. <laughs> so we turn in our prayer books now uh, to the opening reading. Let us turn to page 106. Our rabbis taught 613 commandments were given to Moses. Isaiah based all of the commandments upon two of them, keep justice and righteousness. So we wake up in the morning, but are we awake? Are we prepared? Are we taking stock of the things in our lives, the faces that we see? We go outside and recognize that each of us has a part in the greater whole we call creation. And so for each of you in this beautiful setting, Take a moment to ask yourself, am I awake? Looking around into the trees, the clear blue sky, you really do have a sort of a crystal clear lens into, into prayer this morning. So we invite you to rise for our call to worship. morning, whether it's summertime or wintertime, we give thanks for the creation of the world around us. Today, different from maybe the middle of winter, it just feels so intense, so real as we look around and when we see this beautiful garden that we are in. And so um, we turn to page 118 and we recognize that our garden is really just a little taste of the Garden of Eden. In the middle of the page, we read, when God created the first human beings, God led them around the Garden of Eden and said, Look at my works, see how beautiful they are, how excellent. For your sake have I created them all. See to it that you do not spoil and destroy my world, for if you do, there will be no one else to prepare it. Baruch ata Adonai, Yotzer HaMe'orot, Blessed are you, God, creator of light. And we continue on the next page. From creation to revelation, our worship propels us through time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the world was destined to be more than just a chance creation. God spoke and Abraham responded to the call. Hineni God, here am I. This is our prayer of God's revelation to 
Abraham and Sarah. It is known as Ahava Rabbah. Great and abiding love. For it is in revealing ourselves to others that we truly show them our love. God's revelation is a divine embrace. As God reached out to Abraham and Sarah, God is reaching out now to us. How shall we respond? Kineni God, here am I. Kineni God, here am I. Blessed are you, O God, who has chosen our people Israel in love. One twenty four. <laughs> Vishinan taham levanecha, vidibar tahabam, beshiv techaha, bebe techa, uvlech techa va derech, uvishok pecha, uvekumecha, ukshar tam leot aliadecha, vehayule totafot ben enecha, uchetav tam al mezuzot betecha, uvish arecha. Leman tis keru va asitem et kol mitzvotai, vitem kedoshim lelohechem. Ani Adonai elohechem, asher hotseit yetchem meeretz mitzrahim, viot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai elohechem emem. There's a story about how when the people were standing at Sinai um, to receive the Torah, God asked them, um, who is going to guarantee this commitment that I'm giving to you, this covenant? And they, they went through, like everyone they could think of, our elders will be our guarantors, our prophets will be our guarantors. At the end, the answer is our children will be our guarantors. And it's about passing down our tradition from generation to generation to these beautiful children that we see over here my left. You're right. Um, and we see the future in their eyes and their enthusiasm and their love for being Jewish and their love for this community. And it's, it's really the essence of what it means, the word redemption, which is what we celebrate here at this moment in our service, the moment when we crossed the sea and ultimately found ourselves at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. So we turn together uh, to page 128 as we sing the words of Nikamoch. i 
Israel, who fed a kinomecha, Israel, go aleinu Adonai tzevaot shemo kedosh Israel, Baruch atah Adonai. Gar Israel, Service continues with the Kedusha, page 134. Oh, 
As you're seated, we pray silently.
friend of mine shared with me this Shabbos that she had received a challenging, scary diagnosis from the doctor. And uh, her mom was there, and I said, you know, there are lots of people running around this temple right now who had the same diagnosis many years ago, and they're doing fine. And the mother looked at me and said, yes, but they weren't my daughter. For this prayer right now, this Misha Beirach on page 136, they are all our daughters, they are all our sons, and if they need a prayer of healing, we send it to them with that kind of ardor, that kind of fervor, fervor and that kind of intention as we pray together. pray for peace and we pray for healing and I think that both of those seem much more reachable much more attainable when you have love and when you have companionship and so this morning we are not only celebrating being together for Shabbat celebrating our children and our families but a wonderful couple that's about to meet under the chuppah and so I call them now for their Ufruf wedding blessing Rachel Mallerman and Max Gordon and as they come forward they'll be receiving gifts, gifts of a one-year membership to Temple Israel, and also a mezuzah for the doorpost of the home that you will share. And speaking of blessings, Rachel and Max, you are both getting the best possible start you could because you both come from families that are so loving so supportive, so given, so giving, and have given you the most beautiful gift, really the gift of an example. And so as the both of you meet under the chuppah and start your lives together, create your lo own little family together, we pray that God, you sanctify their love and help them create a home built upon the values of our Jewish tradition, faith, learning, and the community. We pray that your chuppah be transformed into a home, a home of happiness, of joy, of hospitality, filled with laughter, a home based in trust and respect. And may you always be with them, O oh God, guiding them, supporting them, encouraging them in all of life's experiences. And we pray you be granted the greatest gift of all, the blessing of peace. And we say together, Amen. <laughs> Mazel tov, mazel tov, simi tov, simi tov, mazel tov, mazel tov. 
I just want to point out that that beautiful couple you just saw met on a Temple Israel Israel trip uh, as part of the youth group. So kids playing over there, remember, a few years from now, Yifti rocks. Okay, so anyway. You never know. So it doesn't feel like it can get much happier than this, but one simcha, one joy leads to another, and it always does. And so at this moment, we have the pleasure of welcoming a little girl into our Jewish community and giving her her Hebrew name. So we'd like to invite Lenny Rose Weinstein, the daughter of Lisa and Randy, and her siblings, Ellie and Levi, to come forward now to be welcomed into our temple community. And as you come forward, we have gifts for you, a baby book, candlesticks, some certificates for our ECC, and all kinds of wonderful good things. I should also point out that you have now brought your third child back from out of town to Detroit to be named to Temple Israel. I think God is giving you a hint about where you should live, but I don't want to say anything. <laughs> Lenny, you are so beautiful, and you are the window through which we glimpse the future. At this sacred moment in your life, we bestow upon you the Hebrew name Leora Rachel. Named in memory of your great-great-grandmother, Lenore Rothenberg, and also great-grandmother, Rose Mink. Your proud grandparents are Karen and Joey Mink, Adrian and Jerry Weinstein, and you are blessed with great-grandmother, Florine Rothenberg. We love you, we welcome you, and we pray that you will grow to Torah, to Chuppah, to Ma'asim Tovim, to deeds of loving kindness someday back here in Detroit. Amen. And we all say, Amen. Amen. So kids, if anybody wants to hear a story, come on down. Come on down. All right. And I need my, my two actors to come also down. So this week, we begin the book of Deuteronomy, the last book of the five books of Moses in the Torah, in the scrolls, in the ark. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you guys this morning, hi, baby, this one's mine. Um, Deuteronomy is all about stories, and knowing that we were going to have all these beautiful young families with us, and knowing that stories are such an important part of our lives and who we are, I thought I would tell you one of my favorites. <laughs> it's okay. So I want to begin by telling you a story, a story of Judaism, a story of community and of faith, and a story that has two, maybe three, very important characters. We have Shlomo and Rivka over there. We'll meet them in a minute. So the story begins many, many years ago at a Shabbat morning service. Now, the rabbi gave a very, very, very long and very boring sermon, as some rabbis are wont to do. And this sermon dealt with the intricacies of the loaves of challah that the priests were required to keep in the Holy of Holies in the temple in Jerusalem. It was a brilliant sermon, so brilliant, in fact, that almost everybody in the congregation at some point or another fell asleep. And Shlomo, the baker, along with most everybody else, was slumbering in the congregation. And after the rabbi finished and Shlomo made his way home, his wife said, Shlomo, what did the rabbi talk about today? And Shlomo said, Ugh, um, I think, I think, I think that the rabbi told me that God wanted me to put Chalas in the ark. And she said, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I, I guess if the rabbi said it, it must be true. So, you know, go ahead. So the next Shabbat, Shlomo, who was a baker, 
cooked an extra two beautiful loaves of challah. And when he came very, very early on Shabbat morning, he took the two loaves and he said, God, I hope this is what you want. I, I think this is what the rabbi said. And he opened the door of the ark and he put the challahs in, closed the ark, went back to his seat in the congregation, finished the story. Great. And right before the service started, when everybody was mulling around and chatting, there was a woman named Rivka who was just a poor tailor who had a husband and several children, and she was at her wit's end. All of the sewing and mending that she was doing wasn't enough to buy food she needed for her kids for the week. And so before, this, before the service started, she would never actually go to the service because she felt like she didn't have appropriate clothes. She came and she prayed before the ark, and she said, Master of the universe, I can't take it anymore. Please, please do something. Change my fate and help me feed my family. And she opened the ark to look at the Torah. Ah, oh, do you got, what's in there? And Rivka sees that there are two challahs in the ark, and her prayer has been answered. She takes the challahs, thanks God, closes the ark, and goes back home to feed her family. So the next morning, Shlomo came to the temple. He was very nervous. He wondered all night long what was going to happen to these challahs he put in the ark. He came over to check. He opened the ark. It was gone. Not a crumb was left, and he was overjoyed at having served God. And half out loud and half to himself, he cried, next week, cinnamon raisin. <laughs> so the next week he came, he put his cinnamon raisin challahs in the ark. God, I'm so glad you liked my challah. I promise as long as you eat them, I'm going to bake them. And so he left the synagogue and went home. And five minutes later, who should arrive at the synagogue but our beautiful friend Rivka, who humbly approaches the ark and says, Master of the universe, last week you performed a miracle. I had enough to feed my family. Is there any chance you would perform another miracle for me? And she opens the ark. Wow, cinnamon raisin. My favorite. She takes the challahs out, goes home to feed her family. So according to the story, this went on for 20 years. Every Friday afternoon, Shlomo the baker would come and leave the challahs, and every Saturday mo and every Friday right after, Rivka would come and show up and take her challah out. And then one week, the rabbi came early. She was surprised when she heard a voice coming from the sanctuary, and she peeked in and saw the baker standing there in front of the ark. Shlomo was saying, God, sorry about last week. We had an accident at the bakery. Sugar and salt got switched. I'm really sorry if the challah tasted weird. I promise it won't happen again. Have a good Shabbos, as he was opening the ark to leave the challahs in. And the rabbi said, Shlomo, what are you doing? And Shlomo said, I'm, I'm giving God challah. Right, Shlomo? Yeah. You can't do that. God doesn't need challah. Please don't put food in the ark. And he said, well, you were the one who told me to do it all those years ago. So Shlomo and the rabbi were arguing back and forth. And who walks in? But Rivka. And as she's walking in, she's saying to herself, God, I don't mean to be picky, but last week the challahs tasted really, really, really extra salty. So she goes to look in the ark, and suddenly everyone knows what's going on. Shlomo jumped up and screamed, what are you doing with these challahs? And Rivka says, these are God's challahs. God makes them for me, for me to take and feed my family. And at that moment, all three of us, we got the picture. And so there are several endings to the story. The first ending would be that Shlomo and Rivka were very embarrassed and none of this happened again. But the second ending, the right ending, is that the rabbi says to Shlomo, you thought you were baking challah for God, but you were baking them for Rivka. And Rivka thought you were taking challahs from God, but you were taking them from Shlomo. But really, you guys were doing God's work with your own hands. So they closed the doors, and from that week on, Shlomo just gave Rivka her challah knowing that this was the work of God to feed someone in need. And that is the lesson we're going to take today, is that it's not up to God to do all the work that we have to put our hands in and do a little work to help God out and do the right thing and take care of each other. So as we say Shabbat Shalom, can we get a round of applause for our two actors? Beautiful job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Go and take a bow. And now, thank you. I'll ask our actors actually to stay up here for one second as we invite all the children up to come and help us open the ark 
and march around with the Torah, the keeper of stories, the root of it all, the place that we learn how to be a good person and how to treat each other as we join together and rise as the Torah service begins. We are coming for the Torahs. Please be seated. It always amazes me how people flock to the Torah to just get a little touch. And I once had a woman come up to me. She was in her 90s. And I was teaching Torah in the Shabbat morning. And she was so excited to just kind of sit next to the Torah and be able to look at it. And she says, she says I've never been this close before. And I thought, wow, what a shame that we, we don't get that close to the Torah. And so I think that starting out with the stuffed Torahs and getting the kids used to it and moving on to the real thing, please God, younger than 90 years old is really the goal. And so we begin the book of Devarim, the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter one. And chapter one. <laughs> and shall we do the Aliyah together? If you are of bar or bat mitzvah age and above, please join me. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Leolam Vaed. Asher di ber Moshe el kol Yisrael beever hayarden pamidvar barava mol suf ben paran uven tofel velavan vehat tatserot vedizahav achad asar yom mechorev. Derech har seir ad kadesh parneha. Vayehi ba'arbaim shanaha ve'ashte asar chodesh ve'echad la chodesh. Diber Moshe el b'nei Yisrael ke'chol asher tziva Adonai oto alechem. Acharai hakoto 
Et Sichon Melech HaEmori, Asher Yoshev BaHeshkon, Veit Og Melech HaBashan, Asher Yoshev BaAshkarot BeEdrei. Please rise in honor of the Torah. Vezot a Torah, asher samoje, lifnei b'nei Yisrael, al pi Adonai, te yad moshe. to remain standing as we turn to page 206 and we only close the ark so that our little ones can come and have the honor of opening it once again so all of our little people joining us today our wonderful families if you are a child 11 and younger please come up and help us open the ark <laughs> Sano ke goye aratso, velo sama ke mishpachot adama, shelo sam el kino kaim, le goraleinu ke kol hamonam, vahanafu gorim, vitzahavim umonim, ilne mele alve hamlavim, in the service if you feel more comfortable sitting please go ahead if not you can remain standing for the shloshim names and your site names we do take a moment to remember those in our congregation and community who have died in the past 30 days the period of shloshim minnie nathanson adelson melvin barnett norman bornstein robert coleman Lori drucker phyllis esminger nettie firestein paul fox 
Sylvia Goodman, Herb Gubo, Gerald Hallberg, Richard Hartz, Dennis Herman, Lawrence Kamen, Pearl Mountner, Sylvia Pomerantz, Norman Rotenberg, Myra Schloss, Marilyn Schneid, Susan Salter, Betty Stramer, Beatrice Sulzer, and Maury Wexler. We also recall the Yortzites of Dr. Robert Louis Deitch, Ben Gervitz, Josef Rosenberg, Walter Siegler, Charlotte Weinstein, Abraham Weisberg, Marion Rudner, Ruth Bell, and Joyce Brown. We remember them with love and honor them as we rise for the Kaddish. Page 214. Yit Gadal Vid Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Be'al Ma Divra Chirute Viam Nich Malchute, Be'chayechon Uviomechon Uvchaye Dochol Be'it Yisrael, Ba'agalau Vizman Kari Vimru Amen. Yehe Shmei Raba Mevorach Le Olam Le Olme Olmaya, Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Paar Vit Roman Vit Nase, Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shemei de Kudisha Brihu, Le Ela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata, Tushbechata Venechemata, De Amiran Veal Ma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shemaya, Bechayim alenu veal kol Israel veimru amen. O se shalom bimromav, hu ya ase shalom. Alenu veal kol Israel veimru amen. We pray that the source of peace sends peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved among us. Amen. Shalom. Okay, so. Thanks, guys. <laughs>